Oh, do you all love this beautiful music? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. At Christmas, it's a time when we look at the life of Jesus. And I think it's uh, almost overwhelming to realize that a human person came to the earth to bring an awareness of God in every thought and every word and every deed. You know, most of us would say we have good hearts, wouldn't we? Mm -hmm. And that we've good intended and that we, we love and we meditate and we reach out to God. But to walk in complete connection with God, to walk in the energy emanating that divine frequency at all times is overwhelming even as we reach out and, and think about it. And so our little Christmas songs that we sing, they, they open our hearts to that. They open our hearts to, to the possibility that we too one day will be that evolved. Isn't that our goal? Yeah. To walk knowing our oneness with Father, Mother, God, and still to be on the earth where we can create and exchange and enjoy. So joy is very important at Christmas, would you not say? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's such a time when everybody is focusing on light and, and love. I have the uh, opportunity to counsel with two young people who are still in high school, or no, younger than that, one of them is even younger than that. And I got to speak with them on Friday, and Friday was school's out day. <laughs> And the joy level was exponentially increased. And you could see their little spirits just shining and, and, and ready for love and ready for the celebration and ready for this holiday where the focus goes not to toil, but to love and being loved and exchanging love. And it, it reminded me, ah, oh, yes, to be young. <laughs> How wonderful we all need, and we will all get there, most of us will get there during this week, when our thoughts will finally turn and we'll be, oh yes, it's time to be happy. It's time. And that idea of time for joy sets up within us a receptivity and, and just opens us up to all of the divinity all around us. Collectively, when we have that many human beings coming together and saying, all right, it's time to celebrate love. It's time to celebrate life. It doesn't matter what your faith is, even if you're non-Christian. A lot of theologies celebrate a loving celebration at the same time of Christmas. Why? Because it's easy. Because the whole world is turning to love. So this time when we be go into that pocket of yes, it creates a vibration where the angels can actually come so close to us. And they can work so much more deeply with us. And we call them the Christmas angels. They were actually there at the birth of the Christ, and they're actually with us when we come into this beautiful space of receptivity. And you know, every time you ask someone, what are you doing for Christmas? What are you saying? You're saying, hey, how are you going to party? How are you going to celebrate? What are you doing to, to bring joy into your world? We're expecting a joyful answer. So we're all preparing for this joyful moment, and the consciousness, that group consciousness, actually allows the divine to come. And this is when we can really experience peace on earth. If we're lucky, we can experience peace with our families. And with intention, we can certainly experience peace within our own hearts. And where does it always start? Within. So, peace on earth, when I am expecting joy, and I'm allowing those angels to tend me, peace on earth, peace within me can begin. So, Christmas is a time when the divine is so close, we can start to feel our own divinity. Because when you feel that peace, what are you doing but stirring that own spark of your own heart? And we feel that oneness. Christ, Chris, Christmas is a crossing of the masses. It's when the masses turn to that spark of divinity within. Again, it doesn't matter what faith they are. I'm not sure when the Christmas celebration began, as far as celebrating the birth of Jesus. Probably within the first hundred years or so after his um, ascension. And I know in my heart probably why. 
it began to be a point of focus. When <clears throat> the churches started to really focus on creating belief systems and laws, you know, what difference differentiates this little church from that little church, what do they believe, what do you believe, it probably became necessary for the entire civilization to go back to love. What, what did he teach? He taught love. Okay, let's go back. Let's celebrate when he came. Let's celebrate his birth. And in the scriptures, we have some bits and pieces of the story. And I don't know that Jesus ever told the story of his birth. It's never presented that way. But I'm sure after he left, what's the first thing you do? You, you go and talk to people. What did you know? What did you know? And we gather the data of the experience so we can don't lose any of the details. And I'm sure in the Gospels, in Luke in particular, there's a beautiful story. Um, and Matthew has a bit. I'm sure that those were gathered. And we know Luke, if Luke in fact wrote Luke, Luke was more of a uh, journalist, a newspaper man gathering data, trying to put it all together. So we have these remnants. And as we look at the remnants of the story of how he came into the planet, how Jesus Christ was born, we have an opportunity to see a pattern that perhaps could help us in our journey. And I believe celebrating this birth historically became a point of our ancestors turning to love and remembering that the divine can, in fact, permeate matter. You know, the divine can, in fact, permeate matter. And we as a people, when you think about it, all of your walk during the year, even metaphysical Christians, how often do you go, yeah, that matter's too big. And you forget the divine can actually permeate matter because the divine created it. Are y'all with me? Simple concepts, eh? <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So in the story of Jesus, I want to retell a little bit of the story with you. I love the story of Jesus. You know, is it absolutely authentically accurate? Does it matter? It's a beautiful story. What we do know energetically is everything had to be prepared and everything had to be in place, and that's a fact. If the people had not been receptive to this being being born, he could not have come. If the energy on the earth had been so depressed and so oppressed, he could not have come. There were people in place in his world ready and praying and open for the divine intervention of God. And some of the Jewish faith believed in the Messiah. The Essenes were looking for the energy of the Christ. And these people had in their hearts this great hope and this great receptivity. When you have the collective or a collective, even if it's not the dominant force, but when you have enough people holding those higher thoughts and having faith and wanting the intervention with the divine, then the divine can come. So everybody was in place. Everybody played their part. And we don't know how many people there were. There were probably thousands. Thousands of souls who were born before he came. So they could be there. So they could be there to teach. So they could be there to sell his mother a loaf of bread. So they could be there to help fix a wagon wheel when it broke. Everybody in their place. From the smallest task to the greatest. Do you see? And the divine energy now had a place to come through. So, the few that we do know about, we know about the shepherds that were tending their flocks, and we know that the angels appeared to them. And this is primarily in Luke. And, as I always think about Christmas, I'm always interested. And I used to ponder, why did the angels appear to shepherds out on the hillside? When they could have, angels are pretty big, and angels are very powerful. They could have appeared to the city. They could have appeared to um, the Herod, the king. They could have appeared anywhere in the world to herald that this child has been born. But they appeared to the shepherds. They appeared to a group of people who were receptive. And what do we know about shepherds? Shepherds typically represent the humble. 
These are men who work all the time. They are out away from their family for weeks, months at a time. They do their job every day. They don't typically aspire to greatness. They aspire to keep their sheep alive. They aspire to grow their flocks. They typically aren't wealthy because if they were wealthy, they would hire someone to be a shepherd. So we have a group of men who are very humble, humble in their energy. And they probably <coughs> sleep under the stars every night. And they probably see the miracle of Mother Earth and the land and nature. And their eyes are on this moving energy that cannot be defined. And they are humble within themselves. And the angels appear to them. How awesome is that? How, how often do we as individuals think that we need to be higher in our evolution before we can see the divine? That we need to go meet the Dalai Lama or go to a holy place and pray or, or do you, uh, do you hear me? Or each, we miss these workshops. I've got to hit every workshop before I can get there. I'm not high enough in my spiritual training and truth to really see. And I know you feel that way. I know you do. Because it's a human feeling. And it's unworthiness. But the shepherds teach us this beautiful thing of just being humble. I may not know everything, but I know what I know. I know my job. I get up every day and do my job, and I don't lose my sheep, and I take care of those babies. I know my job, but I'm open to the greater. I'm open to the greater. So the angels came, and in Luke, it says, the angel said, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill to men. I'm sure that was overwhelming. Do you not think? An angel appearing to you and giving you a message to be followed by a celebration in the ethers. Have you had that experience? I have. Is it possible it happened? I can tell you it is possible it happened. I can absolutely stand before you and tell you it is possible it happened. It's highly possible. Whether the words are correct, who knows? Who knows if they got the words down right? There probably wasn't a scribe scribing it. But don't you think you'd etch those words of those angels on your heart? And don't you think when Luke came and asked you, were you one of the ones there? No, but my grandfather was, and this is what he always said. Could have been. Could have been exactly that. But what we do know from the energy is the humble heart allowed the divine in. The humble heart allowed the divine in. And the divine gave the humble heart an assignment. It said, you'll find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. In other words, get the hints. <laughs> Go. Check it out. See if I'm not right. And did the humble heart go? Mm -hmm. Yes. The humble heart went. Now, how many of us would go? <laughs> We had that song last week, that's last week the choir did, Would I Miss the Miracle? You know? And even when an angel appears before you and says, hey, how about it? How many of us would say, uh, 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 go next door? <laughs> <laughs> They've been praying really good over there. <laughs> I don't have it in me. You know? Yes, too much of me. But these beautiful, humble beings received it, and they were given an opportunity to go and participate in an experience that was divine. That was all. You have a chance now to go and see what we're talking about, to show up. You don't have to do anything else. 
and just breathe in the energy because this is way cool. How simple is that? Wouldn't we want that opportunity? Do you know you have that opportunity? Okay. So the humble heart has room for the divine. Your humble heart following the guidance to honor the Christ child will set up a vibration for all men. Let me repeat that. Your humble heart following the guidance to honor the Christ child will set up a vibration for all men. When these men fulfilled their destiny by going to the manger or wherever it was, they set up a vibration so that every humble heart who was willing could see and participate as one does all can do. How powerful is the part we play in our world? Do you hear me? Are you hear me? How powerful is each step that you take? And it may seem in, in, inconsequential to you or insignificant to you, but because you've done it, because you've taken that step and acted, it's now available to everybody. They set aside their daily responsibility and became an active participant in God expressing on earth. Now that's the click right there. In order to go see the Christ child, which is probably a couple hills over, they had to set aside the daily responsibility, put it on hold for a minute, and go participate in something that would bless them for their life. How many of us are unwilling to set aside our daily responsibility? Yeah, I'm too busy. And I am seasoned enough to be able to stand before you and tell you with quite certainty your responsibility is not going anywhere. It's always going to be there. You take a day, you take a week, you take a month, it's still there. And it will always wait for you. And your responsibility is your creative activity on the earth plane. But when the divine asks you to take a chance with the divine, you get to lift. All right. The humble heart visited by the, the divine was given a part to play in the manifestation of God. Take a breath. Whenever I am visited by an angel, which I have shared with you guys as they occur pretty much every time, you know what I'm doing? My job. I'm not in a deep meditation, because when I'm in a deep meditation, where am I? I'm in my own self. I'm in my heart. But one time, I'm working on seminary, typing on my computer, typing on my computer, breaking down seminary, trying to get a teaching guide going, and boom, boom. I couldn't have pulled them in for anything. It was not me asking. I was shocked at the presence. And st I stopped immediately to hear what was the message. And it was so overwhelming. I cried and cried for the next hour or so. You know, I hit my knees. It's overwhelming. <coughs> and I just cried and I tried to remember what I was being asked to do. And do you know what I'm saying? They came to a humble heart who was busy doing her <laughs> humble job. <laughs> the other times, I'm, several times I've just been back in the fountain praying in, and vroom, I'm doing my job. I'm just praying in. I've got a client waiting. I don't have much time. And there it is. And I try to get the message knowing I've got a client. Well, i got to go. But I try to hold as long as I can and set aside the responsibilities and hope my client will understand. So I can get the message of what is being asked of me. And sometimes they come to tell me not to worry. We got you. Don't worry about the church. We got the church. Sometimes they come to ask me to do things. Do you think this happens just because this is my job as a minister? No. It happens because I love God with all my heart and soul. And I want the divine in me, the divine of God, to be more important than anything else. 
And that is my goal. Maybe not this lifetime, I don't know. But I'll reach it because I'm on that path. Those of you are, everybody's on a different path, different thing. Maybe your job today is just to be creative. Maybe that's what you came to give the earth. Maybe that's where you are and what you need to do. Everybody's on a different path. But you don't have to walk your path without the divine. Do you hear me? Keep that humble heart and let that energy come to you. Take a breath. Very quickly, I want to take us through the wise men and then we'll close. Tell you about the wise men. I love the wise men because they were very wise. <laughs> and they were astrologers. And the wise men had been watching the planets in the sky. And so they knew by the placement of the energy from their wisdom that a king was being born and they knew he was going to be a king of the Jews because of the placement of the planets in the sky. They knew this. This was their wisdom. This was the, they could have been a geologist or, or, or any kind of scientific study. They were wise. And so they took their earthly wisdom and they said, let's go and find this baby because we can see it's happening. It's happening. Oh my God, can't the whole world see? Of course they can. If anybody knows what the skies are about, it's happening. They take this wisdom to um, Israel, and they start talking to the people. Where's the king? You guys know a king's being born. Can't you? Hey, look, king's being born. Do you not understand the skies? Can you not read the signs and the times? And they're expecting the common people to understand that a king's being born. Well, the common people have no idea. But when they go into Jerusalem, they are making too much of a wave, so word gets to Herod that these foreign diplomats are looking for a king. And they go into Herod's court, and they say to him, well, of course you know a king is being born. Herod said, I have no idea. Somebody find out what these people are talking about. So he, they dig in the prophecies, and there are many prophecies, but in Micah there is a prophecy that in Bethlehem a king will be born. Let's, I'll just read it to you quickly. And you, Bethlehem, though you are little among thousands of towns of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth a ruler to govern Israel, whose going forth have been predicted from old, from eternity. Well, that was pretty powerful for Herod to hear. And he said, really? You guys carry on, find the king, and let me know what you find. We have our wise men dealing on the level of consciousness of their own wisdom. Do you see? They're approaching everything from what they know. And they follow this beautiful guidance and they find the babe and they find the mother and the father and don't you think they're very surprised? When they actually see this baby who they feel and know is who they are seeking, what opens up within them is divine mind. It is not what they thought. It is greater. When our thoughts of wisdom take us as far as we can go, we come to a point where we have to yield to the divine. Yield to the higher knowledge and higher wisdom. And when they saw that baby, they knew. This was not a baby that would be the king on an earth plane. This would be a different energy. This would be a spiritual energy that would change the world. And that's hard to see, isn't it, when our wisdom guides our way? We're always looking for what makes sense instead of what is. So on the journey, we started with the humble heart that follows leadership and the, the wise mind that must yield to the divine. And when you get into that space in your own world, what did they see? But they saw a mother and a father that were willing to sacrifice everything for this baby. The wise men said, you know, Herod's on your case, so you need to hustle on out of here. And Joseph and Mary went to Egypt to avoid Herod's wrath. The wise man gave them logical knowledge so they could move. But Joseph did not say, 
I got to go back and take care of the farm. They said, our world is now where the divine sends us. Within every human person, that spark of divinity, that spark of our Christ in light, is totally cared for by our Father and Mother God, totally surrounded by the Mother and Father that will do anything for it to grow. When we can gather all of our thoughts, like the people, all of our thoughts, and keep them focused upward, keep them in a joyful, receptive state, and then can humble our hearts and allow the divine to appear to us. And then don't let the logic take over. I can inventory every one of you, and I know this to be true. And I can ask you to remember a time when you felt divine intervention. You'll tell me. And I can ask you now what you think about it. And you'll have a whole list of reasons why it wasn't true. Why it was just something else. I mean, a coincidence, an accident. Uh, mm, do you know what I'm saying? The mental mind wants to negate. But the mental mind has to yield. Yield to the divine. And when we can do that, we can touch the divinity within. How's it feel? Easily done? Ready to try? All right, let's put our feet on the floor. Feel that beautiful light of God's love coming over you. And I want you to ask that this, in this column of light, this beautiful light, that you just feel the energy of the Christmas angels. And let your focus go deep within your own heart. And in your mind, I want you to begin to look for the humility, the humble heart that lies within you. You may have to move some fear out of the way. You may have to just give it permission to shine. Find that energy of your humble heart. And feel it awaiting the call of spirit. Just let the energy vibrate through you. And now feel, let your focus shift and begin to feel the wisdom that you own. You can be very proud of the wisdom that you own. This is what you know, you're good at it, you're good at many things. Feel that beautiful light of what you know. And let it become pure. And feel your desire to let the divine move through that wisdom that you want. And as it moves, it just changes the energy, the shape. You don't lose anything. It just revamps it a bit. I let divine light move through my wisdom. And now feel your humble heart open, your mind open. And feel the thoughts in your field. And ask to choose joy. Feel the thoughts becoming joyful. I choose joy. Feel the energy shifting all around you. Now let your focus go deep within your heart. Allow yourself to move deep. And you'll begin to feel a light growing stronger and brighter. And that is the light of your own inner Christ. And just move to where you can see or touch or feel it. And as you sense this beautiful light, be aware of Father, Mother, God with you. 
holding that beautiful white sea. And you have prepared a space. Your mind is yielding to divine. Your heart is humble. Your thoughts are joyful. Invite that light to get brighter within. Invite that Christ to get brighter within you. And feel your energy begin. Quicken. Feel the light just beginning to move closer and closer until it just begins to engulf who you are. If you can breathe it in, breathe it in deep. Let it begin to express out into the arc field, even for a moment. I celebrate the Christ I am. I celebrate the Christ I am. Take a breath. And Father, Mother God, I ask that you bless each here today. And as they go forth, it is my prayer that this holiday season, that they feel the divine moving matter for them. That they feel the voice of the angels and the touch of your spirit. And let us truly know that we know we are the divine children of God. And there is only love. Breathe, take a breath, send your love into the room. But before you open your eyes, see the presence of Jesus Christ and let's say thank you. Send your love to him for coming, for opening our hearts. And say amen. Amen. All right. How are you doing? Your homework this week. Are you ready? Yeah. Do I want homework? Yeah. Yes. Of course. Sure. <laughs> Celebrate and be joyful. Can you do it? Yeah. Yes. That's? Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. Thank you. I think the front has to be more enthusiastic. Our back row doesn't speak up now. <laughs> Celebrate and be joyful. Are we in agreement? Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.